this is racing with lots of tips, but I'm going to save my tip for the end of this video. I have been challenged by Cynthia Joyful Creation of you to get to know me a little bit better. My husband may interject. Excuse me. And I hope with the five people that I challenge will let me get to know them better and you in the Yawning Street. So with no further ado, let's start with our first question. Besides, first question here, besides yarn, is there anything you collect? I collect panda bears because from a very young age, when I saw how panda bears work together to keep in their family tight, close-knit with them, I want to have the same concept with my husband, my fur babies, or anybody that I meet on my journey. Second question, what is your most prized possession? That would be my Bible, because it teaches me how to give to myself, be true to myself. My second is my husband, and my fur babies, and my family. Question three, name a book or movie that is important to you. Don't I, believe her, she's going to say Roadhouse. I would say the blind side because it teaches no matter where you're at you can always whether we start at the bottom or we hit rock bottom there's always someone out there that is going to help us along the way and all of you have helped me and it just is a true good movie it is I like the scene where um Michael shows his defensive skills and in the car accident everybody thought it was SJ who was injured when it was Michael that stopped the airbag from going in his face and I like when they go into the store and she says well the sign out front says big and tall no with him you need bigger and taller okay let's move on to the next question name did we just do name? Yeah, we did that. How many, in how many languages can you say thank you? Let's see. Hello in English. Hola in Spanish. Aloha in Hawaiian. Guten Tag. Which is? German. German. That's all I know for now. And you said hello. It's thank you, honey. Oh, okay. Gracias is Spanish. Thank you is in English. And I don't think I know any more. Uh, can say hello in more languages than you can say thank you. <laughs> I'm just nervous, so thank you for being patient with me, everybody. Well, I like in the movie with Sandra Bullock in <laughs> Miss Congeniality when she makes a statement. When you call somebody in Hawaii and they pick up the phone and then they say aloha and you want to end the call and you say aloha, doesn't that start it back all over again? We'll have to find out. It's a cute movie. Okay. What is the most interesting place you have visited? And for you, that's quite a few in the United States. But I'm going to go a little bit further. In 2009, I was given an opportunity because everybody knows that I'm a nurse. I was able to take a cancer patient to St. Thomas. And just to see the simplicity of everybody down there, and with one of the hurricanes, it was destroyed. I don't know if it's been rebuilt or anything, but that taught me, no matter where we're at, cherish and be grateful where you're at, because you never know what circumstance could change that. So it would be St. Thomas in the Caribbean Islands. Didn't you also say that uh, the story about the dock that was used in... Yes. Uh, when we docked, the ship had come up on one of the docking places, and that dock was in Pirates of the Caribbean. So I got to walk on famous platform where artists, actors, was able to go through so there's a lot of places and it, it was my first time to have a banana daiquiri 
And when we eat bananas, we think the green or just getting yellow is the best. But to have the ripest flavor of a fresh banana off the tree is as dark to ripeness that we get ready to make banana bread. So when you get a chance to go and try new things, go and take that opportunity because it's really good. Are you a morning bird or a night owl? Hands down, I'm a night bird. When I first came into the semi, there were times that I was staying up when Tom was getting up in the morning. And I can function better at night but I have seen at times being in the truck, I've had to get up early and my husband knows, don't ask me questions when I first get up because I'm gonna just shoot off whatever I say. Sometimes it's not been appropriate, not that I'm doing anything inappropriate, it's just not the answer my husband wanted, so. And I think I've already answered the next question for you because I keep getting the gang in here tell us about your animal family I think that answers the question all of its own but I'm gonna go back a little bit further before we got Memphis and ice we had a pup not a well we were told he was a puppy but he wasn't his name was Jimmy and he helped me with a lot of my craft projects he would Burl here in my lap and I would cover him with whatever project and there were times that I was doing tedious work he would go and nudge Mr. Tom on his arm wanting to get up in my lap and Mr. Tom would look over and he would say I'm sorry but you're on your own because when she's doing an intense project I don't even bother her but yes this is Memphis we got him on 4th of July 2023 and he has been welcomed into the pack with Mr. Ice, which they protect us, they love us, and they motivate us like all the doctors say, you need to get out and do more exercise. One more story I like to iterate with Jimmy. You had that dog so spoiled, he had to go to sleep underneath the covers. That dog, from you knitting your blankets and him being covered, he preferred be covered up all the time and as you can see Memphis is trying to play with icers let's move on what show or movie do you re-watch Escanaba in the Moonlight with Jeff Daniels oh that's hilarious you ever see it make sure you go potty before you see the movie because you'd be laughing so hard there's a good chance you might pee your britches it is a slapstick comedy it is cute it's funny but and it's say, simple i would say there's a lot of movies but off the top of my head blazing saddles um the war room which is a very good movie and as i said earlier the blind sight we haven't watched that in a while. I think it's time to... See some movies we haven't seen in a while. Yeah. How do you recharge? I like to walk up in the mountains and just get away from all technology and just see the streams, the fish, the plant, the green. Um, getting together with family and friends, talk about good things. Every day I recharge reading my devotions, reading my word with the Lord to make sure I am ready on a whim and I like new books in crafty, knitting, crocheting. If you ever get a chance to ask my son Sean about yarn, <laughs> she's got so much yarn at home. I had him come over and help me move some totes that we had yarn stored in. And he said, Dad, I'm sick and tired of moving yarn. You tell Racine I'll come over and move anything, but I'm not moving any more yarn. So whenever he wants a project, we make him go and buy the yarn. Oh, this one's going to be a tough one for you to answer. What is your favorite way to travel? 
when I lived out in Washington, I had an opportunity to ride on a train. And it's a, a slower pace. You get to see more of the terrain. And I will tell you, when I get to become a homebound person, I am going to be grateful I don't have to drive in this, ride in the semi or on a bus or in an airplane because it's too confined and I just want to be more out in the open so traveling by train is by far my favorite. Do slash did you have a nickname? Yeah, Ray. Well actually, growing up my mom and dad had seven children and I never had a nickname. All my other siblings had an opportunity to get a nickname. And I always felt kind of out of place because my mom or dad never gave me a nickname. But when I became a nurse and I worked with dementia and Alzheimer patients, they were not able to do the double consonant. And this is an opportunity for those of you that do not know how to pronounce my name. It is Racine. But the dementia and Alzheimer patients would always call me Ray Ray. And they would get so excited, and every day they got to meet me over again because they couldn't remember from the day before. So my now new nickname is Ray. What was your first official job? I worked in Little Caesars Pizza in Gillette, Wyoming. Making up pieces, taking phone calls, and listening to what the customer was ordering make sure you all would be happy. If money was no object, how would you spend your day? I would spend money in giving an opportunity, a meal for somebody that hasn't eaten. I would like to help um, orphan shelters like on special holidays and being able to bless my children or grandchildren when I see something that they are not able to afford and that I would be able to bless them. If you became the ruler of your own country, what would be the first law you passed? I would say... Don't diss the queen. If you became ruler of your own country, what would be the first law you passed? That everybody would have health care because with being in the medical field, I've seen so many situations of having to deny people medical attention that they needed or supplies and that we would all be able to go without a question to a situation knowing that we would be able to get it and not have to jump through hoops to try and cover. And even now today, I have met so many of you that you are constantly having to answer questions, wait for circumstances, and sometimes we don't get what we need when we need it because we have to jump through hoops. So free medical care. Name something you are proud of. And that's the final question. Something that I'm really proud of is my crocheting because when my grandmother was still alive, everybody was, had an opportunity to be taught something from her and everybody kept on going and saying, teach us your Spanish traditions and foods and stuff. And I thought, you know, I'm sitting working right next to her and I got to learn that. I wanted something to be treasured for after she was gone. And I asked her at a young age, Grandma, teach me how to crochet. And now I'm able to give opportunities to other people. I'm now being asked to teach other people how to crochet or to knit. So I will treasure that for the rest of my life, something that I got from my grandmother. And when she passed away, my cousins and aunts, I had made a special doily runner to be with my grandmother as she had at the service.
nervous and everybody was like, who put that in there? And I wouldn't volunteer. My mom come up and said, Racine had given that to her back in appreciation. So as I end my podcast, I just heard this recently. You know, when your glass is half empty, you wonder, am I going to be able to get through in this day or what? But I give everybody an opportunity because of all of you. You've given me a full glass to be able to come and ask when I've had situations going on for encouragement, how to do something when others have not had that trust and belief in me. So I thank you for this opportunity that you got to know a little bit more of me and I hope it blessed you. And take care and have a great day. I love all of you guys. Say bye, Memphis. No, no barking. Say bye, Ice. Bye-bye. Thank you, everybody. Take care. Hola.